In day-to-day -day life, we fill in parts of the passing picture as our visual memory makes shortcuts and assumptions, putting together a picture of the world that seems complete. What happens when those assumptions prove wrong? That's where we get the phrase, smoke and mirrors, the tools of visual confusion illusionists use to exploit the science of sight to fool our vision. Movies present spectacular sights and grand illusions. This is a movie set, but how big? What looks like a space station on an alien planet is a trick. 68B type one. A tiny model near the camera and a full-size stage further away. Filmmakers are essentially the masters of illusion. Here, we see the two actors, we assume they're in a massive set because we don't have the ability to think, hold on a second, this is just a small set and the actors are a considerable distance away from it. Cut. Visual illusions trip up the perceptual system, the system that is normally right. Here, we're exploiting the loopholes when suddenly we're very, very wrong. Illusions exploit how we see the world. They rely on the difference between what the eye sees and what the brain understands. Magicians have always relied on this delicate confusion. Hi there. I'm Marco Tempest. Tem, Tem, Tem. I'm a magician. Now here's a little optical illusion. 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 Now let me show you just how easy it is to fool the eye. I have a three-dimensional object right here. And I also have a two-dimensional object, this paper disc. Now, if I place the three-dimensional object next to the two-dimensional object, something very strange is happening. Check this out. It looks like the two-dimensional object has become three-dimensional. But if we get rid of the three-dimensional object, something else is happening. Check this out. Did you see? The cube now looks like it's completely two-dimensional. All right, here we go. From another angle, I have the secrets reveal object. themselves. I also have a two-dimensional object, this paper disc right here. Now, if I place the check next Underlying to the, the trick object, is a genuine scientific principle explaining how our brains Check build a three-dimensional visual world. Check this out. Right, this is all about how we read perspective. The three-dimensional cube, once established as being three-dimensional, stays three-dimensional in our mind. Even when we look at the taped lines, it still looks three-dimensional to us. It's almost like our eye fills in the missing information and wants the object to be three-dimensional. And that's where I get you. All right. Our world is filled with visual information. The brain copes by creating shortcuts, relying on experience to fill gaps with informed guesswork. Light and shadow. The size, shape, and distance of objects. We assume the world operates according to fixed rules. But sometimes, we're just plain wrong. Take this ordinary looking room. I look to be much, much larger than Sarah. And this isn't camera trickery, instead it's an incredible illusion. Because when I'm in this corner, Sarah suddenly looks much, much larger than me. Now in reality, the two of us are roughly the same size. It's all to do with the amazing way in which this room has been constructed. Not regular in shape at all, 
the room has a bizarre geometry that's disguised as normal. We see square rooms so often, we fool ourselves into thinking this is one too. It's amazing how easily our eyes get fooled. We see an umbrella and we immediately think of rain. But on a beautiful day like today, we don't really need an umbrella. We don't we really need an umbrella. Magicians exploit more than our assumptions about the objects and spaces around us. You're about to see what looks like a simple trick, but it has a deeper, more elusive level. Welcome to the color-changing card trick using this blue back deck of cards. Now, the idea is very simple. I'm just going to spread the cards in front of Sarah and ask her to push any card towards the front of the table. Okay, I'm going to go for this card here. Excellent. Sarah could have chosen any of the cards in the deck, but she selected the one which is now laying face down on the table. I'm going to ask her to look at the card and tell us what it is. The card I chose was, in fact, the Three of Clubs. The Three of Clubs, excellent. That comes back into the deck. I'm now going to spread the cards face up on the table. A click of the fingers, and Sarah's card still has a blue back. What's more surprising is that all of the other cards now have red backs. And that is the amazing color-changing card trick. But this trick really doesn't involve cards at all. It clearly shows how the brain picks up only a tiny bit of the available visual That's information. Amazing. In fact, as the trick was occurring, four other color changes went on. Welcome to the color changing card trick using this blue back deck of cards. As the trick unfolds, the camera stays on the cards. One which is now laying face down on the table. Most of us don't notice changes in clothing and background made off camera. The color changing card trick exploits this idea that we have a very good idea of what's happening right in front of our eyes. In fact, 90% of that information we're just not seeing. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like as we look around, we're perceiving the whole of the world. That's not the case. We really are only just focused on a tiny, tiny area. Illusions are about more than entertainment. You see an umbrella. They reveal how what we see depends on assumptions our brains make. Our eyes and brain collaborate to make sense of the world. But our brains need years of training before they can turn what our eyes see into a meaningful image in an instant.